In 4.2, we're going to start talking about soil, how it's formed, and then we'll touch on erosion, but we're not going to talk too much about it, but we definitely will when we get to agriculture. So the learning objective is to describe the characteristics and formation of soil. So soil is mostly water and air and mineral particles. Only a small portion of it is organic. Now that being said, it's a very important portion. Um, so the organic matter is comprised of humids, humus, not hummus. Hummus is what you eat. Humus, you should not eat. Although it won't kill you, most likely. Um, but yes, humus, 1M. And then roots and organisms. And of course they depend on the soil having lots of water and lots of air to, you know, oxygenate it and give it all the things that it needs to carry about its living processes. So soil is formed over a long period of time. Long, long period of time. It's like, I don't know, I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but it's like still like 10,000 years for a centimeter of good soil. Some of that? I don't know. It, it's going to come up at some point in the future lectures, because I remember writing it down. But anyway, soils are formed when the parent material or the rock gets weathered. So weathered means it gets broken down into smaller and smaller pieces. Transported means it gets taken away by either wind or water um, and deposited. So over time, we see that the this rock will break down as it breaks down to smaller and smaller pieces. We see this stratification happening where the higher up you go, the smaller the pieces. The further down you go, the larger the pieces. Um, also, over time, as we get smaller and smaller pieces, we start to get an accumulation of, of organic matter. So, if, like, for instance, we talked about this with pioneer succession, or with primary succession, we have pioneer species that come in and they can live on bare rock, but then eventually they're going to die. And as they die, they get decomposed. We start to get this accumulation of nutrients. So we know that soil is, for lack of better words, done forming when we start to see these distinct layers. Things that affect soil formation are climate topography, or the shape of the land, time, plants and animals, and parent material. The parent material is the whatever bedrock it was. So that's going to determine the composition, the chemical components, um, stuff like that. That's going to be more like a quartzy type of sa sand, or it's going to, um, I don't know, have other other types of elements to it. Climate is a big thing. Temperature and precipitation, that's going to influence how fast those parent materials weather. So, for instance, if it rains a lot, then that's going to cause that those rocks to break down a lot more quickly. Um, also, temperature and precipita precipitation facilitates um, decomposition. So, with more decomposition, you're going to have more nutrients in the soil. So, that, that would increase the organic matter. Organisms, of course, are important because their nutrients are essential for other things to grow. So, when they decompose, they add their nutrients to the um, the forming soil. Aeration, so things like little moles or earthworms or other little things that burrow in the soil, they kind of fluff it up and allow more oxygen to get into the soil and more oxygen means more cellular respiration which means more biological stuff. Of course moisture, again going back to um, things that give life. So any anytime you have life there, it encourages more life. Um, and also the prevention of erosion. So, for example, if there's more things with more roots, then that soil can stay there for longer. Um, or if there's like, it's not very windy or something like that, the less erosion, the better as the soil is trying to form. The more time, you get more soil. It's plain and simple. And topography, um, again, that looks at the slope of the land. And if it's a really steep slope that means you're going to have more erosion so more soil sliding down um, that soil along the slope is probably going to be pretty pretty crappy but then wherever it ends up so typically in like the valley 
and you get a lot of great soil because all that soil has deposited into that area. Um, also exposure to sunlight. So if it's um, at an angle that doesn't really allow it much sunlight, then you're not going to get a lot of growth um, and less life, less life-giving things. All right, you also need to know the layers of the soil. Um, it's going to have a weird letters, but we have the organic layer on top. The top soil is underneath that, then subsoil, then we see the parent material and bedrock. You also have to know the letters, which is, it. I really wish they went in alphabetical order, but I'm afraid they don't. It's O, A, B, C, R. The O, or organic layer, is on top, and so that's all the living things, um, any things that are starting to decay, um, or like in some step of decomposition. The top soil is all the stuff underneath that, so once the things have decomposed, um, all the nutrients that it provides. Um, so there's a lot of organic matter here, a lot of minerals. Um, this is also where we see most of the roots and then things that live in the soil, this is typically where they live because like this soil is awesome. Underneath that we have the B layer. It's a much lighter layer. This is called the, this is the subsoil. Mostly made of clay, iron materials. We got some organic matter if it gets washed uh, down by um, rainwater, but not a lot. Uh, some roots will get will grow all the way down here, but again, typically see most roots will stop in the sub topsoil layer. The sea layer is the parent material. Um, it's kind of like it's the first step of of weathering. So it's still pretty large rocks, um, but they're broken up. So it's kind of like um, if you have an Oreo. Or a cookie or whatever like the whole cookie represents the bedrock underneath but then if you start to smash the cookie bit that's the sea layer so same stuff but it's just broken up a little bit more and of course very at the very bottom we have the bedrock which is one just m massive solid rock so bedrock uh, here's an example of an actual soil profile um, so again as life always is it's not as pretty as the picture um, but we see the organic layer is up on top, the very like top two inches where all like all the dead stuff is and a lot of, you know, humus. And then underneath that the darker layer is the topsoil. Below that is the subsoil. And then you got your parent material. And it's kinda hard to see this picture, but the bedrock is underneath that. And then we'll talk a little bit about erosion. So erosion happens by wind or water. Um the whole the essential part that you have to know about erosion is that it takes soil away and puts it somewhere else. And that's bad because soil takes a long time to form. So we want to preserve our soil as much as we can, keep it where it is, and keep the nutrients in the soil. And we're going to talk more about this when we get to agriculture because it's really where it becomes important. Um, but for right now, we also want to talk about how soil is related to water quality. Um, so the soil is a filtration and it cleans water as it moves through it. Um, so if we lose all the soil, we lose a source of water filtration. And then I just want to touch on a couple examples of erosion. So for example, um, if a river is cutting through a valley, that's erosion as moving with sediment someplace else. Waves cutting back on a cliff, wind blowing topsoil away, glaciers that move rock, and then landslides. So on all these examples, you have soil one place, and then it now someplace else. So now summarize the characteristics of information of soil.